television. Ashley Hurley, our Director of News Operations at Sigma Communications Center, is going to ask our blessing. Let's bow our heads, please. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless these people that are here to speak to our community. I pray that you would send each one of them the message that you want our community to hear. Dear Lord, I pray for this night. I pray for your blessing on each and every person here. Thank you for each and every person that is here tonight. And I pray that you would allow us to hear what we need to hear for our community. And I pray that for a safe travel home and everything today, I pray in your blessing. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mary E. Mars Gymnasium. And we are certainly happy that all of you are here for our 2014 Claiborne County mayoral candidate forum and I'm Gary Burchett we've had uh, the good pleasure to have presented these through our operations at Sigma Communications Center and of course Vive is uh, the other sponsor of these uh, forums uh, Mr. Lloyd Walker the manager we're presenting this through LMU TV WCXZ AM and WLMU FM 91.3 Tonight, we have invited all of the candidates running for the office of Claiborne County Mayor. I want to explain to you the process. The order in which the candidates are responding was drawn at random from the start of this forum. They all went back behind the screen and got all their business in order. The order in which they will answer each question will rotate accordingly. And I want you all to listen, particularly the, uh, all of our candidates, I want you to listen to the rules. Number one, each candidate will be given two minutes for their opening statement. The candidates will have two minutes to respond to questions. Once the question has been answered, we will move to the next candidate until we have completed all candidates. My co-moderator to my left is Dr. Martin Sellers. He and I will be asking questions and we'll be trading back and forth. So Marty, thank you for participating with us tonight. Each question that will be asked will be chosen by either Dr. Sellers or myself at random. And after the general questions have been asked, the audience will have the opportunity to ask a question. This will be screened. The question from the audience will be screened during a commercial break by the moderators. We are asking that the audience not single out any particular candidate and that all candidates will have an opportunity to answer. Finally, the candidates will be given one minute to give a closing statement. Candidates, remember, this is a forum, not a debate. I think that's very important that you realize that. The time you use to answer the question is your time. You can respond however you see fit. Secondly, I would ask that everyone, including the audience, be respectful of all candidates. Slander, mudslinging will not be tolerated. We will deaden your mic if that happens. We ask that the members of the audience, again, be respectful of each candidate here tonight. And with that being said, we do reserve the right to ask anyone who cannot abide by the rules to leave the premises uh, under escort. We understand that not all questions of public may be raised. However, we do encourage you to seek these candidates out and question them yourself. The forum is meant to inform the voters in the most efficient way possible. And please remember that early voting begins this coming Friday, July 18, and the general election is August 7, 2014. We hope that everyone will show up at the polls. Any questions 
before we begin. I have the honor of asking the first two questions. It will go to the number one person on the agenda, I guess, here, huh? Is that how we proceed? Right down the line to the left. All right, first question. State your name for the audience. We have name tags, but I want the audience to know and all of our TV viewers and radio, tell us your name and what will you do to improve the infrastructure in county government in the next four years? My name's Dennis Cook, and question I ask when you think of infrastructure, I think of roads, bridges, and water. And they are the basic elements for our community to grow. And having said that, I'll be a mayor involved in the budget. I'll go through it with a fine-tooth comb, and I'll cut out any wasteful spending and make sure those funds is appropriated to the departments that needs it the most. Thank you. Okay. My name is Casey Anders, and uh, this is a very serious position at Flavin County. And as your mayor, I will take it and treat it as a serious thing because it is. Uh, and, I, and I will work every day. I know our county is in need of a lot of things, jobs for one, and, and then we've got, as Brother Dennis said, uh, the roads and the decision that I make, I will keep the people in mind, I will, uh, and our children, we've got to look out for our children in the future, we've got to look out for our grandchildren, and we need to try to work and get this county to go on forward and build it up like the rest of the counties around us, and a county that we can be proud of, that we can say, yes, we're from Claiborne County. I will be a very serious mayor, and I will work to get every industry and every grant that I can get to improve Claiborne County. Thank you. Next candidate. My name is Jack Daniels, and uh, we have worked very hard in the last four years to uh, have the first ever jobs program in Claiborne. County, and we have uh, laid about 35 miles of water line installed in Claiborne County on the north and the south side. And the infrastructure of this county, we worked about seven months in that uh, to get an ARC grant free application for the Little Sycamore area that had been sought after for 16 years. And I will work very hard for the people of Claiborne County. I ran four years ago on a helping hand. And I believe in that tonight that I have been a proven helping hand to the people of Claiborne County. And I'm very proud of the, uh, everything that has been accomplished in Claiborne County by not just me, all the boards. It takes all the boards working together, county commissioners, and when you work in harmony, you can make things happen the way they have in the last four years. I'm very proud of our young people. I'm very proud of our senior citizens. We've worked very hard with Harrogate and New Tazewell senior citizen uh, groups and uh, it just blesses their hearts so much in that, that uh, we help them down through the year. And so uh, if you've not had an opportunity to go by and visit with them, go by and visit. They work with the arts and they'll feed you real good. And most of all, I want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity and the strength that he is. Thank you. My name's Nathan Epperson. Uh, uh, very good question. My whole platform since I began as mayor 
trying here was an uh, industry to bring jobs in, uh, and I do know our roads needs attention, and there's still a lot of people in, in all districts that needs water. Uh, my main goal is to get uh, communication with everybody. The president has a cabinet where you've got different people in different areas that come together, and I'd like to, I think the mayor ought to have a cabinet too and get the sheriff, road superintendent, uh, president of tourism, uh, just get all these people together once a month and uh, and see where they stand and see where they need money and what, what projects need to be going on next there. Uh, one person can't see all Claiborne County, so it'd take everybody working together, and, and I'd be that mayor that would work together uh, with each and every one, uh, the public, uh, and I'm all about the working people as well. Uh, I spent my life several days in a, in a factory trying to get inside on uh, how hard our people does work in Claiborne County, and I just want to give our working people a fair chance to make honest wage uh, where we can, you know, if we get the dollar trading in our county, and if we make the dollar in our county, and we spend the dollar in our county, you keep it going around circle, and everybody gets to enjoy that one dollar, and uh, that's what we main goals are there. Thank you. My name is Rick Poor, uh, from Claiborne County, born and raised. One of my one of my main goals since I started this is uh, uh, when I go around campaigning, talk to citizens. The roads is our main concern in this county. Everybody agrees on that. Uh, you know, I, I know I've uh, been in the road department. I printed the uh, web went on the website, printed it off the website. What our budget is here in Claiborne County for the last eight years. My my. One of my goals, I want to get with the road superintendent, uh, have meetings with him, tell him what he can tell me what he needs. I want to put together a four to five year plan with the road department so he'll know within the next five years what he's got to work with and he can actually plan and get these roads fixed. Um, he's doing a very good job in there right now. He needs some help. And uh, with this plan, it shows that he don't have to worry about year to year budget. And um, I've worked and where I work now, I've handled my budget there, millions of dollars a year I do the budget. Uh, I'm like some of these other candidates, industry. I want to bring industry in here to help this. The more industry, the more jobs, the more revenue we bring into this county. So bring this revenue in, and that helps the whole county. Roads uh, help our youth out, you know. Get this youth program in here and help those out. But I'm just in it, my heart's in it. I'm just in it for the county. Uh, I'm not in it for the money, not in it for the title. I'm in it from the heart, just to help my county. And I've uh, been out here traveling on these roads and uh, seen a lot of improvement over the past year on these roads. Very good improvement, and we want to keep doing this. And I think everybody's in agreement that that's one of our main goals. Thank so. you. <clears throat> Hello, my, my name's Richard Smith, and uh, I've been the manager of the Food City and manage the budget to find areas where we can uh, have opportunities to spend more on the infrastructure. Uh, it's important to make sure that everybody has uh, the running water, whether it be uh, good, uh, fresh uh, city water and uh, also sewer. Those are two parts of infrastructure that a lot of us can take for granted until we uh, We've had our septic tank back up, and we don't have sewer. So it's important that uh, we look for the money to be able to do that. It's important that we look for the grants that are out there to do that. Uh, I feel like internet service and cell service is also a, uh, a challenge for many of us in this area. And as in important as it is uh, with telephone service nowadays, internet and, uh, and the cell signal are part of our lives. Uh, with that, uh, a lot of that comes with uh, working with organizations, whether it be AT&T, Verizon, or whatnot, to get the, uh, the needed service to our area. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for your first series of answers.
I did a, a, an intentional change in the order because generally speaking, people are a little tight uh, when you get into that thing. So I gave you, it was not a sample question, it was a real question. But we're going to take a commercial break right now and we're going to come back and let you make your opening statement since you're more relaxed now than you were when you started, okay? We'll take a commercial break and be back with our four. Back to our mayoral forum here at the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. We're going to give our candidates an opportunity to state their positions and, and do some opening comments. But first, I'd like to put a little hint out to our audience. You all be thinking, if you have questions down later in the program, the audience will have a chance. And what we would like to do, if you have questions, let us know over here. We have people that will talk to you, screen your questions, and so we'll be able to use those when we get down to the audience participation, okay? Does that suit everybody here? Okay, now, I'm assuming we're gonna keep the same order as we go through. So now, I hope you're better relaxed, and I hope you all can just step right up to the microphone and give your opening and statements of, about really, why do you wanna be the mayor of Claiborne County? Floor is open. Again, my name's Dennis Cook, and I'm a lifelong resident of this county. I've raised two children here. I have two grandchildren. Uh, my reason, my main reason for running for this position is because I care about my children, my grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren. And I think that Claiborne County needs to move Excellent. forward so when they grow up, if they want to continue to stay in this county and raise their family and have a future and live in this county, we have to move forward to provide higher paying jobs so that could be possible for them. Uh, I just got a passion. I'm not running for this position because I need a job. I've got a great job. It's been great to me. I've raised my family here. I'll be leaving a great job if elected. I'm running because I have a passion to make a difference for the people of this county. And I was born and raised here and I love being here. Thank you. My name is Casey Anders and uh, my top priority will be the people of Claiborne County. And your needs and uh, what you need and that my office will be open at all times for any advice or suggestions that will help improve the county. I, I'm the oldest one of them. I'll be 67 September. Been here a long time, and I've seen the county grow, and I've seen the county slow down, and I've seen the county fall back. And it's time that the people had a say-so in the county it's time that uh, we got something done for the people of Claiborne County. I've seen a lot of needs that we need, and, and I'm going to work that the county gets what it needs and deserves. And let's not forget our uh, veterans. We need to give them the recognition that they deserve and thank them for everything that they've done for us. You know, if it wasn't for them and our ancestors that stayed here while they were gone, we wouldn't be here where we're at today. And I'm just so glad and, and thank them, and, and I'm going to work for you, the people of Claiborne County. 
that'll be my top priority is you, your children, and your grandchildren to get this county going forward. My main purpose for running for this office uh, is still the same as it was four years ago when I sat in this same debate. Uh, I told the county that I would work very hard in that to help our county. And I believe that everybody that has read the record on me in the last four years and the county commission and all the other boards, I mean, I believe you can read that and see that this county is moving forward. My door has always been open at my office. There have been thousands come in and out over the last four years, and I've not treated one person no different than anyone sitting here tonight in this office. Because I believe a man needs to treat others as he wants to be treated. And as far as uh, uh, this county here, I love it with all my heart. Uh, and first, I want to say uh, this is not this is not my office. This office belongs to you, the county, the people of Claiborne County. I work for you, and I believe it's a proven fact that I have worked very hard for this county. I've worked hard. I grew up on a farm that I live on right now that my mom and dad work very hard for. And when I was old enough to put a hole in my hand, I went to work. A lot of kids don't even know what a hole is now, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but uh, I've worked hard ever since then, and I've accomplished a lot of great things in my life, and I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful for everything that has happened in the last four years in Claiborne County. Thank you. Like I said, I'm Nathan Everson, and I mentioned industry. My number one goal is industry in Claiborne County. Number two goal is uh, our youth in Claiborne County because they are the future. They're the day. Uh, so we need to take care of them. Uh, I'd like to bring, like I say, higher-paying jobs, bring more jobs in. Uh, it's a how many applications I've uh, uh, put a, a request in on uh, trying to get people jobs. So. Uh, People's hurting for jobs. People's wanting to work. So uh, I feel like we need to provide them with that. Um, I feel like uh, I graduated high school in 1999 here. I was born and raised in Claiborne County, and uh, I feel like it's just time for some uh, young blood. So, you know, I'm a, I'd be a working mayor. I wouldn't be one just to uh, watch things go by. And I ain't saying that that's what's happened in the future, but I'm a hands-on type of person. I like to not afraid to get my hands dirty. I, I like to have my hands on what's going on. Uh, so every what project or every what was happening in Claiborne County, I'd like to be there to be able to put my hand on it. And uh, But I would be working for the people. Uh, you know, I'd be working for you, not me. Uh, and uh, I take a lot of pride in my job. You can uh, background me at, at my employers, at my employer now. Uh, take a lot of pride in my job, pride in my county. Uh, pride in myself, and uh, I think uh, as a leader, I'm a leader, not a follower. So uh, uh, I think if the leader has got energy, I think the whole county will have energy uh, going forward. Thank you. Okay, as I was saying earlier, uh, when it comes to this county, I want to be a servant leader for this county. I want to. I've listened to some good ideas from these other candidates. I like to implement their ideas with my ideas and, and do work for this county. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. I want to be out here in the community and, and working for them. Let everybody know that I, I care. Um, I always said when I retire from the military, I want to give back to my community. Well, this is my chance. Um, I just want to be a leader. I want, I want to work for the citizens of Claiborne County. What the issues are with the citizens is what I want to do. I really, I've coached a little league all my life, and uh, I want to get out here and work for these, for the youth. Get something in here for the youth. Get them a sports complex or a rec center for kids that don't even play sports. They need something. Just go out and be with their friends, their buddies. Um, like I said before, one of my main focuses is our roads. You know, work with a road commissioner and get get some 
things going for these roads, get these bridges and stuff, keep going. Um, so many goals in mind here. I could go on for 30 minutes and talk about different things that I want to do, but I want to work for the citizens of Claiborne County. Okay? I've been a leader. I've been a follower. Now I want to be the servant leader, and I'm not in it for me. I'm in it for my county. Uh, my county supported me for all my years of military. I want to give back to the county. And if I get in, I will make a promise, the one promise I make to everybody. I will work. I'll do my best. Thank you very much. Hello, as I stated before, my name is Richard Smith. Um, I know that each of us has a different uh, reason for, uh, for running for this office. And I know that each of us as citizens want something different from, uh, from our county. I know that as a father, I want a place that I can raise my children, where they can get a good education, where they can uh, stay after they graduate from school uh, and get a good job. As an employer, I want to be able to have an able workforce uh, that is educated. I believe that our county has a lot going for it with Walter State Community College and LMU right here within our county. Uh, it gives us a great opportunity to uh, train new people that are coming in for new industry. I'm sure that, uh, that there's partnerships available out there for any kind of an industry that we bring in. I feel that a lot of times we sit back and we wait for business to come to us and knock on our door and say, hey, I want to move to your county. Well, let's face it, they're not knocking on the door. You've got to go looking for them. And I feel that we need to go out there and look for those businesses that are looking to grow. We need to communicate with the other counties that are getting the new businesses and find out what they're doing and then model our own actions after that. Uh, we look and see in the newspaper that Gatlin, Tennessee got a new Beretta factory okay manufacturing firearms these are high-end jobs that uh, that are coming there we need to find out how they did it and model our actions like theirs all right in case you in the audience are wondering how these people are keeping within the rules if you look behind you we have the old sport clock up there they have a chance this time to sit and watch the countdown go and uh, you're doing a really good job. I'll, give, I'll compliment all of you for that. Second question, and uh, we're going to stay with you down on the other end of the table. Reverse the flow. You want to drink a water before you get to the next Sounds question? Sounds good to me. All right, second question for the evening. What will you do to improve the business climate in Claiborne County in the next four years? Well, like I was just saying, uh, we need to go out and look for, for more business. But we also need to uh, diversify what we do for the county. We can't just rely on industry as far as uh, factory jobs. We need to be looking for the tourism and the opportunities to increase our tourism. I think that uh, they've done a great job with what they've started with the visitor center. I would love to see that to fruition we need to have a way to get people to stop when they're coming through our community. I have seen the traffic counts going through the tunnel on the other side. I've worked with Bell County on what they've done as uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce for Bell County. I have worked with different organizations in Bell County, and I would like to bring that to Claiborne County. Uh, of course, I've worked in Bell County because that's where my business has been. Uh, I have my oldest daughter graduated high school, so I thought that now's the time to start working on the county that I live in rather than the county that I've been working in, and that's why I chose to uh, run. I've got a disadvantage over uh, my other candidates here because I've only been here for 19 years, but I chose Claiborne County as my home and continue to. And. Uh, If I had a speech here, I swear you, you copied from me, looked at my speech, but, but uh, I'm like you, uh, I've been, 
we need, you know, I want to work with the industry, get industry in here. I've been talking to some people up north, a couple of gun manufacturers that would be honored to be coming to Claiborne County, uh, bring more jobs, that thousands of jobs they would bring in here. And I've um, been talking to the tourism com committee quite a bit. And uh, when they get this youth, when they get this visitor center open, the revenue they'll bring into this county, just like the White Lightning Festival, it alone brought over $3 million into this county. People don't realize that, but it does because the money changes hands so much. And when we get this visitor center in here, uh, the people come through when they go to the Bristol races or whatever, they'll have to stop just to get curious. And they'll see what Claiborne County has to offer. And when we start showing them what we got in here for tourism, that just brings more money into this county, more revenue, then we can keep on helping our businesses. You know, we got a lot of mom and pop businesses out here that need help. We don't want to see them shut down. You don't want to help everybody. And uh, I just keep going back to, to different things, to the roads, the youth. All this revenue that we bring in here with these businesses, these factories that come in here, it does nothing but make our county grow. And, um, you know, I, I want to have our county, I want the citizens to be proud of, of where they're from. When people drive through here, I want people to go back home and say, you know, you've got to go to Claiborne County. You've got to see what they've got going. So the more jobs, the more industry we bring in here, the more revenue, the more we can help our businesses. You know, I'd like to have a little program uh, like they have in other counties. Say, hey, next week I want everybody to shop at this one little business. Next week we do this business. You keep helping our local businesses. And uh, that's what I look for. You know, when I started running and currently still, uh, I'm a general manager of a property management company and I do manage uh, shopping centers, industrial parks, and uh, different buildings for businesses as that. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the industry and uh, that's, you know, to bring that in here, but even the Smile Place is uh, one of the most recent uh, businesses we brought in to New Tazewell was uh, Hammers uh, Retail Clothing Store. And it uh, seems very small to some people, but you wouldn't believe the percentage that it helped the whole shopping center, you know, Dollar General store. So if we bring new, exciting stuff in here, it helps all the businesses around us, and, uh, and that's what I'm looking for. And the, the industrial parks, I've man managed some up in Kentucky, and I've dealt with different ones in that area there, and a lot of them would like to expand on this way. Uh, I believe some of the industry we already have, I believe we ought to look into something by giving them some kind of property tax break or something, or uh, we've all talked about higher paying jobs. If we can help that employer just a little bit there, maybe he could uh, spread some of that across to his employees that would get them higher wages. So, and that's what we're looking at. But like I say, I know we have to start small and, uh, and, and go from there. Uh, I'm looking at the whole picture, not just what's in front of me. And tourism is a big part of our industry in Claiborne County. Uh, I know south end of Claiborne County, if it wasn't for the lake traffic and stuff, they, they would be a bad shape down that way. But uh, we do have a lot of tourism. I understand that's a big industry as well, and I think we need to seek diligently to uh, help them as well to catch these pe people traveling through our county to let them spend a little money with us as well. I'd like to add on to a little bit there what uh, Nathan was just saying. We have a very strong tourism board that's working right now, and uh, I'm very proud of it. This has happened in the last four years. We have a real good industrial board that is working very strong right now, and uh, DTR, as we speak, in the last four years, we are getting ready to add 120,000 square feet there. What you got to realize to uh, to get businesses in, we are already given tax abatements, uh, jobs incentives with our jobs program that is working very well. Working very well. England's and Lazy Boy has has benefited from that program. But uh, you got to realize too. Now we've been in the greatest. Uh, since 1925 you don't come out of it overnight but uh, 
uh, need, we need to bring jobs, and the next, uh, and we have brought jobs to Claiborne County. And we are looking right now for, we've got three areas right now picked out, the industrial board does, that is very active. And we're looking right now to pick a new industrial board or a new industrial park in that, that we're going to try to attract businesses to come in. But you've got to realize one thing. You can't give them the county to come here. I mean, we can't give them our county to come here. But we have got good workers in Claiborne County, and we've got people that are willing to sweat and do their job. So I believe if you'll check with the existing companies right now, you'll find the quality of workers in Claiborne County. Well, I'm still Casey Anders, and I need you both. There's a man told me the other day, I was talking to him, and he said this county will never go forward. I said it can and it will with the right leadership. And I am that leadership. I will work hard with all the boards, commissioners, local government, state government, federal government, and I will work for you, the people of Claiborne County. And I'll tell you something else, too. I work with the Tourism Board because uh, this is a beautiful place. We got the pinnacle up there. We got a lot of things people could come and see. And I'd like to see Clearfield as much part of Claiborne County as the rest of us. Sometimes we sort of push them apart. But I'd like to see them just as much a part of Claiborne County as anybody. And I will work for you, the people of Claiborne County, to try to help get everything I can in here that we need and we deserve. The county right below us got a Volkswagen plant. Why couldn't we have got that Volkswagen plant? I will work to get us something for the people of Claiborne County when I become mayor. The question was what would I do to improve business climate, not what's already been done, Listen, I, I specialize and have in sales and marketing for over 20 years, and I'll take that experience to the mayor's office. I won't sit by to, to improve our business climate. Most of my time will be spent out recruiting, marketing, and selling our county to industries and manufacturers that wants to relocate or build their business here in our county. I've said from the very beginning of my campaign that I envision a county that's run much like a business, and I think the mayor should be someone that understands and knows how to handle money and understands business, and it needs to be run like a business. And if I'm fortunate enough to be your mayor, I will set back. Most of my time will be spent out looking for business to come here and I ain't gonna take up time with what everybody else already said. We all know that this is a beautiful county and we need to work with the tourism board and do everything we can to get people that's traveling through here to not just stop at our parks, but stop at our existing businesses that's already established in this county and do business with them. Thank you. We're gonna take another commercial break. We'll be back with Dr. Sellers in our next round of questions. Let's take a break. There's a place not so far away. A place where you don't have to keep the volume down. Or clean up your room. A place where you don't have to make time for free time. To do anything but show up. You'll find all sorts of creatures in this place without have to. The silly you. The proud you. You may even meet the curious you. You! 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 There are lots of views to catch up with. Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place to the forest where the other you lives 
But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Dr. Sellers. Thank you, Dr. Burchard. I'm Martin Sellers, Dean of Arts and Humanities here at Lincoln Memorial University. Dr. Burchard asked me to ask a few questions of the candidates, and I'm proud to do so. I think at this point we'll start, uh, if it's okay with all of you, with the second candidate from your left, Mr. Andrews, and, the, and we'll work our way this way and end up with uh, Mr. Cook, if that's okay with everybody. The question I have for all of you is this. In Claiborne County, Will you propose any major road improvements in Claiborne County within the next four years? Yes, I'll work with the uh, road department, uh, the road commissioner, and I'll work with the uh, commissioners. And I, can, I don't see why that every road in Claiborne County couldn't be paved. There's 800 miles of road in Claiborne County. And I think the uh, school bus routes are to be the top priority, the ones that are worked on. And I will work with the road department. Now, he's the man over that, and I, but I will work with him and try to get every grant and everything that I can from federal and state levels to improve all the roads in Claiborne County, not just a certain few. Uh, uh, if nothing else, gravels would help tremendous. I drive a school bus and I know what it's like. And I've had them to come and fill up potholes for me. But uh, we need to work on our, uh, our roads in Claiborne County. And I don't see why we can't get every single road like the rest of the counties around us. And, with, uh, and I will work with the money, with your money, the Claiborne County people's money, the best I can to try to get this road uh, deal straightened out and, and our roads improved tremendously. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say that uh, we've been working with the road department for the last four years. I think that uh, improvements are very visible. I think that uh, Bill Falls and his crew is doing a wonderful job. And uh, you got to realize, children, where we started from uh, started from uh, having to get new equipment and all these things and all the uh, ingredients that it takes and that for blacktop and everything anymore is triple. The prices is triple. But the budget is pretty much uh, staying the same. But now, let me say this. County Commission, and I believe Bill Foles will back me on this, has been very good to this. And we're working very hard. You don't, you, you don't get this way overnight, and you don't get out overnight. There's no way that I can sit here tonight and tell you that all the roads are going to be fixed if you'll reelect me. I'm not going to say that. But I will promise you this much, the same promise I gave you in 2010. You can see the improvements on the road, and we will continue to work very hard We've got grants for, I guess, about 12 or 13 bridges right now because the money had went from a 20% match to a 2% match. County Commission was very proud to help Bill Falls to put that 2% match in when we did our budget this year. And look here, that's going to happen. And I'm very thankful on that for them. They work very hard, and I tell you what, I'm sure every time somebody hits a chug hole, they think of Bill. But <laughs> I'm thankful in that, that they're working on getting our roads taken care of. Thank you. On the roads, I know that's a big issue, and uh, I know money's issue. Uh, a few months ago, I was sitting in a county commission meeting, and, and our road superintendent, he explained that he had $100,000 to patch potholes with. And... After the 100000 was gone, uh, that would be the end of the patching. So I understand there's no money tree to go get more money for that. It takes money. It will take time. I, I have seen improvements as well in our roads. I've seen improvements in the road department's equipment. Um, and a very gr talented group of guys that works for our road department, uh, I think they're very talented individuals. But, uh, you know, 
we have to work on getting grants for these roads. Um, I know they got grants in the makings for the bridges and stuff now, and keep working on that. And I know we've got a $25 wheel tax in place now. Um, I see as one option taking part of that and putting it towards the road fund because, uh, you know, that goes to the Sheriff's Department now, and I, I feel like the Sheriff's Department is uh, uh, doing well with their money. Uh, they've got a good budget right now, and they seem like they're making money. So uh, it's one option. I, I don't propose adding no more wheel taxes or no more property taxes to do that, but uh, just to play around with our options there and see what we got. But uh, uh, I understand these are miles and miles of roads, and, and I can't promise either that every one of them will be fixed in the next four years. I promise I do my very best, as, you, as the road superintendent promised in the, in the commission meeting that he'd do his very best to do and he's sorry if he didn't get to your road and I, that's the way that's the promise I can make I do my very best to work hand in hand with them and if I have to get out there and uh, uh, shovel some asphalt and holes to save them some labor there I'd be willing to do that thank you when Bill Fultz took office he brought in a, a guy to help him a uh, good engineering guy that's really really intelligent when it comes to the roads uh, they started over in Clarefield. They've been working their way this way and, and really making some improvements on these roads. Um, like he said a while ago, they got $100,000 back of this. That $100,000 don't go anywhere on roads. It patches it, and that's it. Um, when I said in my first statement, you know, I want to work with the road commissioner and uh, get him a, a plan, four- or five-year plan, let him know, here's what, here's what I'm going to give you the next five years. And he has something to go by. He don't have to worry about running out of money this time. He's got four or five years to, to work with something. I want to uh, do the proposals and, and justification to go get grants if, it, if needed to help him. And I know, you know, as a mayor, you can't go in and say, I'm doing this. You've got, you've got your commissioners that's got to uh, help you. And uh, I, I want to work with them. I want to improve our county roads. When people come from other counties, I don't want to drive through and say, you know, we need our roads like Claiborne County. And that's one of my main focuses as mayor is to work with the road commissioner. He come, tell me what he needs, and I'll do my best to get with the commissioners and get with this county and do my best to help our road commissioner because he's got a long road ahead of him. He started when he f took over office. He had a, a, a rough way to start. And I, most people I've been talking to has noticed the improvements. And so let's focus on this and, I, and focus on getting more grants in here to help him and give him more money to work on these roads. Uh, his garage down there, you know, when it comes to a hard rain, his garage floods. People don't know this. They're working out of a little shack down there. And let's help him get him a new garage built and uh, help him get some new equipment to work on these roads. So uh, that's, that's, that's my goal is to help our road department and get these roads fixed. I think the uh, the question was, did we have any major uh, projects, road improvements planned? Um, the only major, uh, or one of the major improvements that I would like to see is our our roads going towards Knoxville. Uh, I I realize that the bridge falls outside of the county, okay, but we really need to get that end of it. Uh, taken care of as far as to get us four lane uh, to that point that would be the major road project that I would uh, I would propose but like everybody here said er everything comes at a cost and are there road projects out there that need to be done that are more important than some other things that we're spending the money on uh, I'm not so sure that there are uh, once we get to where we can work on improving the cash flow in the in the county, uh, we can work on major projects. The the fact that every year our budget uh, doesn't grow stays the same. Every employee wants to be able to see a raise every year. We're not going to be able to do any of that until we solve the problem with increase in the income and that's got to come through uh, growth in industry growth in property value uh, 
those kind of things are what's going to increase the amount of money that we have to spend before I look at any major projects to invest in. I'm going to have to know that the money's there. We all know that, that the roads are a major issue in our county. Everywhere you go, they're talked about, but I won't be a mayor that oversteps my boundaries. We have a, a great road superintendent. He has a great staff on board. But however, I'll be a mayor that works closely with the branches of government, commission, to make sure they have the funding they need to improve our roads. And I just think it's a shame that this administration and PICE leaderships has not found it a need to fund the road department more than they're being funded currently. Uh, as I understand it, they only get 1% out of our county budget, and I would go through again, I'll make the point again, of going through that budget with a fine tooth and comb and, and cut out wasteful spending and get it to the road department uh, to improve our roads that we drive on every day. Uh, it's just like at your house. You fix what's important first and you wait. So if there's things that don't take priority and our roads is a top priority, then they ought to be top priority on our list. Thank you. Thank you, candidates, uh, for your responses. Uh, I think for this question, we'll, we'll start with uh, Mr. Daniels and work our way this way and come around the, the, the corner there. Uh, to change the direction a little bit, uh, this question has a lot to do with social services. How closely will you work with social and health agencies to combat spousal abuse, drug addiction, child neglect, and the other, other social problems that, that face Claiborne County? Well, we have uh, achieved a great accomplishment with our hospital. Claiborne County Hospital is now Covenant Health and Fort Sanders, and it has been completed. And they are a very, they are a very strong company. Their total assets is $9 billion. I worked closely for a solid year to get uh, that hospital and stuff into the place that it would be very strong because with health care the way it's changing you have to have a strong structure and that to hold it. me and the hospital board county commission and all these things had to work together in that to make this happen simply because you've got a lot of employees that works there and I wanted to make sure, we all wanted to make sure that those employees were taken care of and the medical needs in Claiborne County are taken care of. To me, the hospital is like a church in a community. If you take it out, it would be greatly missed. And I can't hardly hear your other question that you was asking there, but we're taking care of each and everything that we possibly can and did a great job. I think County Commission, Hospital Board, he is the mayor, we did a great job in that of doing the transfer of this hospital over to Fort Sanders Covenant Health. It's a big facility and your children, my children, I'm looking for the future for them and most of all to make sure you have a place at two o'clock in the morning if one of your children falls and get hurts real bad, you'll have a place to go to, a facility that you can go to and trust me. I'm a Baptist preacher at time or stuff. <laughs> uh, that's a good question about the social services and stuff as well. Uh, as we all know, uh, we, you know, I know Claiborne County knows that we do have uh, drug problems in our community and I know there is uh, spouse abuse. Uh, I, my family works in a school system, so I have, do know of, uh, you know, you, you know, children that has needs as well. Uh, we had the opportunity to work in Louisiana last year uh, for about a week and got to go to a program they had down there, and uh, I think it'd be good for our community as well. Uh, Pump Springs actually does uh, one of them, uh, uh, that as well, but I think we need to help them and help uh, do the best we can to get these people some help, uh, even if it's divorce counseling or, you know, the, the status of a divorce is uh, a lot higher now than it used to be, or it's more known now, I guess, uh, and the drugs and stuff and, and helper people, and uh, uh, without us helping them, that, you know, it, it takes somebody giving them encouragement and a little boost uh, to help them overcome a lot of them problems. 
uh, and the spouse abuse and like I say the marriage counseling and, and all that but uh, uh, get with our churches our local churches and our uh, local administrations and, uh, and see what we can do and work with the, you know, the health department and DCF, DCS and them programs there to get a program that will uh, people can feel comfortable to go to that, that program uh, it was part of the church down there and uh, we got invited just go visit the church and take a tour and that's what they was having that night and a very good uh, you know I, I didn't think I had a problem one but when I got there I felt a lot better when I left there just seeing the people rejoicing and beating these addictions and it, it took the community coming together and helping so it takes the community helping that as well Talking about the social services, um, <clears throat> I've talked to quite a few that's over these services, like the spousal abuse. Um, over years, not just not just the uh, past few years, I mean over the many years back of this, our social services has been kind of put on the back burner, and uh, it, it don't seem like a big part of Claiborne County, but it is. There's more people. There's a lot of spousal abuse. There's child abuse, and there's there's grants in the state of Tennessee out there to go get. Uh, we just got to be willing to do the uh, paperwork, the proposals. We got to justify why we need it. And these these departments, you know, they need these grants. They need this money to help them. Uh, I think last year or a few years ago, our, our spousal abuse center, you know, was uh, given very a very low budget. But and and it's only because our state is kind of uh, they're they're being stubborn sometimes. Our state is about giving money for that. But if we keep pushing it and keep working the proposals, justification why we need it, and show them how many people here in this Claiborne County needs this help, I'm sure we could get the money. Uh, he was talking about Pump Springs had this program over there, and they went out and got a grant from the state to do this on their own. And, um, uh, of course, their grant's been cut out here lately, but they was doing this for a long time, and it helped a lot. Uh, we got a lot of... Uh, when you go out in the community, there's a lot of spousal abuse. There's a lot of child abuse. We need to work it within the system. We need to get with the commissioners. We need to get with the business people and get the money out there to help these centers. Uh, we might need to build a new spousal abuse center. And uh, DCS up there, you know, they have a lot of uh, cases day every day. And they just don't have the money to get out here and work it. So that's a, that's a good question. And... We need to work that. Marty, that is a good question. Um, we do, like uh, all communities, have a problem uh, or some problem with these issues. Um, as these gentlemen have mission, as these gentlemen have uh, mentioned, Celebrate Recovery works uh, works a lot with that kind of uh, um, problem. And uh, they've done a great job working with uh, the sheriff's department. And in, in my opinion, I feel that uh, stronger enforcement of the laws and, and stricter punishment for those that are uh, violating it in the uh, social issues, the uh, abusing of children, uh, whether it be the drunk driving, all those things, in, enforcement is the key. And... I feel that that will help curb some of the problem. Uh, Servolution is also another organization that is uh, is growing at this point and working with that. Uh, I'm fortunate to not ever be personally exposed to this kind of uh, um, problem and uh, we'll work to learn more about it. I don't have answers for everything, and, and this is one area in my life that I've not spent a whole lot of time working with. But I will work with the Sheriff's Department and these organizations that are working for it to find out what it is they need to help get their job done and then work to help them achieve it. Oh, it is a great question. and. You know, unfortunately, we, we can't do away with that pro our problems. We all know that, and there's always going to be a need for DHS and the Sea Shelter and type of organizations like that. But 
as mayor, I'll be available and I'll do all I can to make sure that these agencies operate and have what they need uh, to do their job. And not only those agencies, they, they get a lot of burdens put on them, but we also need to involve, and a lot of churches are involved in, in helping, but we need to go out and appeal to our church leaders and, and get them involved in helping in, in these situations. Uh, you know, the church was established to, to help folks in need, and, and we need to unite them and let them come together and, and also uh, lend a helping hand to people in need because uh, there is a lot of people in need in our county, and this hits home to me because I was raised in a, a single family home and I watched my mother work two or three jobs to give me what I needed. Uh, she didn't take no handout from the government. She worked and uh, we, we just need to make sure we're taken care of. Me and my wife, we raised a foster kid and we understand the broken hearts that they have. And so we, we need to focus totally on church leaders and these organizations and really get involved in helping these uh, broken children and, and parents that needs help. Thank you. Well, I will work with all the social groups of Claiborne County to help uh, people with troubles. And you know, there's nothing no more precious than a child. Your child, my child, grandchildren, I substituted it at school a lot with the little kids, and they just tickle me to death, the questions they ask and what they do. But I'll tell you a little incident in at one school one time. A little boy was stuffing something in his pocket, and the, they saw him do it, so they took him to the office, and the principal made him empty his pockets. Chicken nuggets. He was stuffing his pockets full of chicken nuggets, he said so him and his little brother could have something to eat that night. We've got a hunger problem in Cleburne County. And I don't know what the problem is with uh, people that can't get along. Uh, in the 1995 uh, Cleburne County Baptist Association Minute Books, in, in their Minute Book, one of every five children go to bed hungry in the state of Tennessee. Divorce rate back then was 50%. People need help. That's what these social groups are for. We need to try to help them, try to get uh, money for them if they need it to uh, help the people. But there's nothing no more precious than a child. Those of you who are watching on the LMU TV, if you've just joined us, we are in the middle of our county mayor forum. We would remind the audience if you have questions, again, the time's running a little close now. If you have a question, please contact our staff people over here, and we'll consider that question later on. In the meantime, we'll take another commercial break. gotten distracted here I'm trying to trying to remember I, it's my question now right Dr. Sellers folks if we could uh, quieten down just a little bit we'll go back and start our questioning 
I believe we're with Mr. Epperson now. Is that the, our rotation? Was, was Mr. Daniels last to start off? Okay. The question that has been given to us for the next set of answers, what role will your faith and or your personal values play in creating public policy and or staff appointments? Uh, my role is that, that'll play a big part of my role. Uh, there won't be no favors for family or nothing like that, but my race and my moral, my, my faith, uh, that's the way I was brought up. I was brought up on a farm, still farm some, uh, done construction, uh, was brought up pretty poor there when I was a kid, didn't know it was poor, but, uh, so everything I get a hold of now, I take great pride and great care of it because uh, I know what it's like to not have it. So uh, still don't have a whole lot, but I do take care of what I've got. Um, you know, my faith, uh, I believe we should put God first in all things. Uh, I'm not running an election uh, on religion, but at my personal beliefs, and that's why I, everything I do before I decided to run for mayor, you know, I prayed and uh, and seeing if it felt right or not, if it hadn't felt right, if God's not in it, it's not going to work. So uh, that's how I base that. And every decision I base will be based off my faith and my moral beliefs. I was taught as a kid, and still, my dad still beat me to death today, I guess, if, if he caught me a lying or stealing or taking something dishonest. So I am an honest mayor. I am. I do tell the truth. No matter how bad it hurts, I do tell the truth. So, uh, and so that would play a big issue and this, you know, it, it plays a big issue in my job today as well. And I think we need honest people, good people, and uh, I, you know, I can tell you about me there. So, thank you for that. Uh, as a very strong uh, Christian, I, I attend a little church over here in Tipperal. Um, I always say, anything you do in life, you put the Lord first, and. Lord to take care of it. He'll put, pull you through it. So if, if elected mayor, that's what I want to do, put God first before anything I do. Let him uh, guide me through the through my uh, term. Also, talking about the staff, you know, uh, very I'm very strong, you know, hiring people, people work around me. I want them to do the same thing. Put the Lord first. Anything we do for this county, if we put the Lord first, our county is going to prosper and grow and if we try to leave him out of it you know so that's that's where I am on the religion part and I use that and I try to be a light to the people that work around me and let them see me and I want people to to work and act like I do and I figure if we do that and the, your staff around you puts the Lord first works with you you know we can't fail as a county um, so that's where I stand as far as the uh, religion growing up. I was in the, many a times, I was in the valley, like a lot of people has. And then I've, I've had to climb out of the valley. We all get there. But if we look up and put our faith, faith in the Lord, we'll come out of that valley. You know, our county, anything we do, there's times we all go through those hard times, those valleys. But, you know, with that, we can come out of it. We can be stronger doing that. And I think it's made me stronger and made me uh, a strong candidate for this. And that's where I am as far as that goes. Uh, faith is an important part of, uh, I believe, all of our lives. Uh, how we use that in the job that we do, uh, for the most part, when you're uh, brought up obeying the Ten Commandments when you're brought up with the right morals and character. All those are going to be in every decision that you make. Um, you know, I, I have faith that, uh, that everything's going to come out right regardless of what I do. I do know that uh, a lot of people lose faith in government when they make decisions uh, based on personal uh, personal issues. Uh, as far as staffing, uh, I guess I've got the advantage over these guys since I, I didn't live here before and haven't grown up here. 
because I've only got four family members uh, counting uh, myself, so uh, there, there's only three others that you'd have to worry about me putting in an office. Um, but uh, I have uh, always used uh, good, strong judgment in hiring. I've spent, uh, spent the last 20 years hiring in our county, and you have to listen to each person, okay? Uh, as far as those individuals that work with you, and I say work with you because a, a leader can only lead if those individuals are working with him. Uh, those individuals deserve the opportunity to tell their side of every story, and it's your obligation to listen to it and use sound judgment in your decisions. That's a great question, and listen, I will never make an apology for my faith, for no position, for no job. I'm a Christian, and I'm proud to be a Christian, and I rely on my faith uh, for every aspect of my life. As far as it playing a role in, in county government, probably the Apostle Paul gave the very best advice I can think of in Philippians 2-3 when he said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves and as a public servant is a person who performs duties for other people and if I'm fortunate enough to be your mayor I'll be a mayor that fulfills that expectation and I'll put the needs of our citizens above my own needs to work with commission to help our county grow. And we'll do everything we can do I, uh, to institute the Christian faith into our government. And I won't be a self-serving mayor. I'll be a, a mayor that people can trust and they'll be proud of. And if I'm fortunate enough to be elected in four years, I promise you can stand and say that you elected a mayor that you're proud to be called your mayor. Thank you. Well, I, I am a uh, uh, ordained Baptist preacher. And God told us himself in the first commandments, Thou shalt not put any other gods before me. He's number one. God, and then country, and then county. And I think charity starts at home. We've got a lot of need here in Claiborne County. And that's where our charity needs to go to first. Is look and see what's around you, what needs to be done, people that are in need, and let's try to help them. You know, I got to thinking the other day and I was taking the trash off. Uh, what we waste, we waste thousands of dollars a year per family is wasted. That could be recycled. We need to recycle. What are we going to do when we run out of stuff that, that we can't make plastic and stuff out of? It's all going to be under the ground. But we need to look at our county and see a lot of needs in our county. And I, I've been saved, saved in 1964, in a long time. But I believe in the Lord and I will trust in Him and I'll put Him first in country and in county. But if I'm elected mayor, I'll put it uh, God, county, and country. Well, faith is something that uh, I've held closely to. My mother and father carried us to church, no matter if it's snowing or what it might be. And uh, they taught us a great value. My dad always said, he said, son, now listen. He said, uh, you don't have a lot of money. He said, a man is as good as his word. God 
called me to preach in 1991. I have pastored three churches. The first one was Richardson Chapel. The second one was Little Creek Missionary Baptist Church. And I am now the pastor of Dunlap Baptist Church. Over here in Millsboro on the Beltline. Check with all three of those churches and he'll tell you exactly where Jack Daniels' heart is. I have always put others before my needs. Check with anybody you want to. And I'll tell you one thing. If I've got $5 and you need it more than me, you can have it. But uh, our faith is a great thing. But now listen. They asked Jesus one time. They said, Jesus, well, what about Caesar? And don't nobody go out and say Jack's a preaching over the television, okay? But he said, what about, what about Caesar? They said, uh, he said, bring me a coin. They give him a coin, and he said, what is the subscription on that? They said, it's Caesar. He said, render unto Caesar that that belongs to Caesar. Give to God what is God's. You've got to know how to separate your faith and your work as you go down through the works of life. Okay, thank you. According to my little instruction sheet, we have two more questions. Then we will look at the audience for questions. I will ask the first one, and Dr. Sellers gets to close out our forum questions. The next question, Mr. Paul. What new programs will you introduce into county government within the next four years? Tough question. Uh, since I've started running uh, this my campaign in January, one of my first newspaper articles uh, I put in there was I want to implement, you know, a youth program here. I want to uh, work with our youth. And I want to bring a, uh, one thing I said I want to do is bring us a sports complex into this county for these kids to come in. They can have, uh, where I go to these other counties and do tournaments and stuff, uh, these kids from other counties can come in and play here. And it brings more revenue in. It gives our children something to be proud of. Then on the other side, you have a lot of children in this county that don't have, uh, don't play sports. So what do they have for them? I want to bring in a rec center of this county something for these kids to go in and meet with their, their friends, sit down and play cards, or just get on their computer and play games or uh, little stuff like that. And we got a lot of a lot of kids in this county. And our, one of our problems is here is drugs. And we need some kind of really, really good drug program in here to help keep these kids off drugs. If we give them something to do, something uh, somewhere to meet during the day or at night and, and meet with each other we can keep them out here keep them off these drugs no are we going to get drugs out here completely no we're not we're never going to do that they're always here but let's put something out here for these kids to uh keep them out keep them out of here keep them off drugs they won't have to be out here running around with the, the bad crowd and everything and so that's what that's actually my main goal in this government is something for our youth I think you're going to hear from most of the candidates here that uh, our, our youth, a program for our youth is, uh, is one of the key things that, uh, or new programs that we'll try to implement, whether it be a boys and girls club or some organization like that to work with the kids. Uh, our kids need an opportunity to be able to go out and job shadow some of the jobs, uh, whether it be a doctor or a lawyer or uh, whether it be somebody that manages a store or whatnot, we need to have a way for the kids to uh, to be able to uh, work with individuals to know what to expect. Um, you know, it, the biggest thing is going to be making sure that we manage the budget well enough to have the funds to be able to, when we decide on a project, 
whether it be a, a YMCA or a Boys and Girls Club, it's going to be important that we look at funding for that and make sure that we don't start something that starts this term and ends with the next one. We've got to be planning five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, so that whatever we do start is able to continue. That's it. What new programs would you implement over the next four years? That's a tough question. And uh, from the very beginning of our campaign, we have stated that uh, our youth is, is very important and we need to establish a Boys and Girls Club talked to a gentleman the other night that had done some groundwork on a charter of the YMCA coming to our county and that's back when the economy went on a downward swing and it sort of the ball got dropped uh, and I was discussing with him that I know every parent every grandparent every church leader cares about our young people and I think we could invest in our youth by pulling together without it being a burden on our taxpayers that we just care enough about them to come together as a county and make that dream a reality. But it's going to take someone that can unite us all together and come together and, and help us understand the urgency of making that happen. Uh, I ain't got but a few seconds, but back to their beginning, high and paying jobs, improving their roads, government transparency. I think all that needs to be implemented in our next government for people to understand how our government works and, and eliminate a lot of, of questions and second guessing where our money is being spent. Thank you. Hello. Uh, one of the things that uh, the fourth, one of the four things that I'm going to look into, it's like they said the youth. What happened to the youth corps? We had a good program years ago with the youth corps where we could get our teenagers and our kids to work in during the summer while they was off from school. We don't have that anymore. What do they look for? They look for anything they can get to make money. They need money. They don't need to uh, go to daddy and mommy all the time and ask for money. They want their own money. Let's try to, get, or let's do get that youth core back. And another thing that I think is parks. We need something for the kids to go to the parks. We need one of them squirting up water things or whatever for the little kids. And we need some more parks and more things in the parks so that they can do. And then I'm going to check into the hunger. Like I was telling you a while ago, uh, hunger is a, uh, is a big thing in Cleveland County. We've got hungry people that need help. And another thing, the schools. We need to look at our schools. I've substituted a lot of schools that don't even have doors on their bathrooms, don't even have locks on them. Why can't we get our kids busy a painting and a cleaning and a repairing our schools? There's a lot of need in Claiborne County, and I, I have seen it over the years, and, I, and we need to, uh, as a mayor of Claiborne County, I will work hard every day to get some of these things done that we need and deserve. Thank you. When we're talking about our, boy, our children of our county, we've got a boys, and we, we're working towards getting a boys and girls club this is old news to me. But uh, information that Claiborne County could obtain its own charter of collaborated with the Morristown Boys and Girls Club. The best option for now would to be piggyback off the Morristown chapter due to, due to the time it would take to get the county own, the county's own, but can develop one later money would be raised to have a facility ready. 
and the money that we would need, we're working with Walter State Community College with their uh, old Claiborne County gym. And again, it just don't happen. Okay, we've been working on this. Uh, the gym of Walter State would take a minimum of $2 million for an upgrade to uh, be up to code. Ideally, a meeting and uh, that with a Morristown chapter needs to take place, and that's and we're already working on that. And uh, all the ideals that I've heard here tonight from each and every candidate, candidate, I really respect them all. But uh, I'll promise you one thing right now: Jack Daniels is a mayor that Claiborne County can be proud of. I take great pride in my work. I have integrity. I treat others as I want to be treated. Check on me anywhere you want to. And the Boys and Girls Club is being, and that's the industrial board minutes that I'm reading to you right now. And we're working on it, and it's being worked on very strong. Here, that and uh, from the beginning of my race uh, in Jan January 3rd, when I picked up my petition uh, to run for mayor, I said uh, from the get go, we need some. When I grew up, we had the Civic Center. Uh, when we was not on the farm, which we grow 12 acres of tobacco and uh, uh, cattle, and all that, didn't have a lot of time. But when we had time, we did go to that Civic Center and play ball and games and, uh, and uh, get with our buddies and stuff. and. Uh, a very good thing and I do agree we need something like that for our children uh, to go to and it on, even on that scale you know just a big open area where they can go uh, I think also as far as programs we're putting in uh, uh, I think we need to have some uh, some style of food pantry uh, there's one over in uh, Millsboro that I, I've got to be with there some and uh, uh, know several of the volunteers that go there and uh, that do that, so uh, I know these grants for that as well, and uh, you know it takes. Uh, I believe the community would pitch in as well, and the county would pitch in, because uh, we have talked about kids going to bed hungry and stuff, and uh, and I think that would be a way. I know uh, we can't help everybody's decision what they do with their money and what they uh, buy with their money, but I think that would be a great thing. And also, we need to support our farmers, get some kind of program. I've said from the get-go, we need a farmer's market for our local farmers to bring their produce and, and set up in a designated location and sell it where our local our community can go buy local produce and see how it keeps everything right in the county. And uh, I believe the community would appreciate that very much. I know we got them selling beans and corn on every corner, but we need to have a designated area for that to happen. We're going to take one other commercial break for our TV viewing audience and our sponsors, and we'll be back with two questions that came live from you in the audience. Dr. Sellers will ask the first question when we come back, and I will close the questions with the second one. Then we will have the closing remarks of each of our candidates. We'll be back in one minute.
returning. Thank you for returning to our our candidates uh, and this, our discussion uh, for the election for mayor. Uh, I have a, a question that has come from the audience that I'd like to pose to all of you, and we'll we'll uh, start with Mr. Cook, I believe, down on the end here uh, to my right. And the question is this: How many of you have attended monthly county meetings? over the past four years, and can you elaborate a bit on those meetings? Mr. Cook. I didn't hear the question. Well, let me restate it one more time. How many of you have attended the county meetings over the past four years? And if you would elaborate a little bit, tell us, about the, tell us a little bit about your, your sense of those meetings. Uh, the last county meeting I was present in I left there and uh, understanding a little more about the county government, um, but truly I didn't understand how the procedures worked of how they voted on the amendments. Uh, so I had a lot of questions and I asked a lot of uh, different people around the county and they gave me some uh, great information. But as far as county meetings go that, that that would be part of my transparency I would like to do town hall meetings all across the county to involve citizens everywhere to be, be more involved in our county government uh, to share their ideas what's needed in their communities and I think by doing that you create unity and we make a better Cleveland County I've not been to any of them, but I keep up with them with friends of mine that's commissioners and, and uh, people that's, that goes to the meetings, and uh, I keep up with it that way. I know a lot that's going on in Clavering County, and I know a lot that we need, and, uh, and I'm going to work after that need that we've got, and, and if I'm elected mayor, I guess I'll probably be at every one of them, but not been to many, and, uh, but I do keep up with it, and I will let you, the people of Claiborne County, know what's going on in the county. Well, I've attended all of them, except one or two, <laughs> but uh, I want to let everybody know what's uh, listening on TV and watching, and you that's in the audience. Claiborne County has a county court meeting every third Monday night at 6.30 p.m. Everybody is welcome to come to those meetings. The budget is open to anyone at anyone that's here or listening to me right now on TV. If you want a copy of the budget of Claiborne County, go by the finance department in the morning and I'll guarantee you, you'll get one. It's public records. There's nothing being transparent around Claiborne County. And I'm an honest mayor, and I'll promise you one thing. I might be a lot of things, but I've never took nothing that didn't belong to me because I was raised different. So uh, let me promise you one thing, that Claiborne County is riding a tight ship right now. How can I say that? I'll show you here in the closing remarks of this uh, a debate or this forum. And uh, there's nothing transparent. It's all public records. Go to the finance department. Come to my office. I'll lay it down there and read it to you and let you see it. There's nothing transparent in Claiborne County. Thank you. Well, over the past, uh, since first of the year, I picked, like I say, I picked up my petition. First January, like I say, I'm not going to lie, I did admit I've been to all the county commission meetings since then, except one I had to miss for work. So, and uh, what I do, I, I try to get a copy of the agenda before it happens so I can look over it and uh, see what's going on and sort of see what I'm uh, listening to there because it would be, it wasn't, my first one was very confusing. When I went, so I picked up my copy of agenda, and it made a lot more sense to me then. I didn't know what to, you know, 
what the bolt and all and stuff, and it is open to the public. Not, not a lot of our county attends it, and I failed at that as well in the past years. I did fail, but it's very good information, and if we, you know, we can find out what's going on in our county, and uh, uh, here, you know, like I say, you, you never know what's going to be on the agenda, so you kind of like shopping at Big Lots. You might as well go every time just to make sure you don't miss something there. But uh, I would like for it to be, you know, I know we can't get copies of records and stuff, and I'm not against at all having uh, the budget and things like that put in the local paper where you can't see it. But, uh, and that's all I've got on that. As Nathan said, uh, we're all guilty of not attending a lot of these meetings. It's for the county, but uh, I've attended a few over the past six months. I've been to every meeting because I've tried to learn, and I figure if I'm going to get this job, I need to learn all I can. Uh, meetings are, when I first started going, very confused about a lot of the issues. After I started getting the agenda, it started making sense to me what they vote on and how they do it. Um, one thing you know I would like to see done is the agenda. I would like to see the agenda put in the paper, you know, beforehand. Let it, let the county know what's being voted on. Um, I would like for the county itself to get out more and fill the courtroom up. And if you have any issues right there at the time to bring them up or get with your commissioner beforehand here and tell them their, your issue that you want to bring up in that meeting. And, um, you know, sometimes I think there should be a little time on the floor. If anybody has this, you stand up and give, give your concerns. I've been impressed with a lot of the meetings lately. Uh, I know we had one where the tourism committee come up and made a big, I think he was up there like an hour speaking and let, it, let the county know what's there. I would also like to, not only just for this county, I would like to go to other, you know, the cities, the Harrogate, Tabitha, New Tabitha, Clarefield, and have town meetings. Uh, and let them know what's going on in these uh, county meetings up here. But like uh, the mayor said, every third Monday of the month they have their meeting and uh, I'd like to see the county get out more and get more involved I know I am win or lose I'm going to stay and get keep involved in this so I'll know what's going on in my county thank you like Rick said uh, I've been guilty of not attending meetings in uh, Claiborne County uh, like I said before I've focused most of my attention in Bell County and I have attended uh, uh, a lot of the meetings for Belt County. Um, as far as the process, it's a little bit different. I have been to a couple of uh, the meetings for Claiborne County, and the process is a little bit different than it was in Bell County. And it was a little bit hard to follow at first. Uh, I'm in agreement with Rick that, uh, that we need to publish these ahead of time so that the public knows what's going to be uh, talked about at the meetings. Uh, beforehand but I'm afraid that that probably would not help the attendance a whole lot and I'm not sure what would help the attendance I, I can promise you that I will be at every meeting uh, that I'm required to and that uh, uh, I will make it a focus from from uh, here forward as far as the county goes because I regardless of how the election comes out I am going to be more involved in Claiborne County for the last question everybody ready we have one final question from our live audience it goes like this how does the candidate seated here plan to keep money in Claiborne County as opposed to consumers going to Middlesbrough this is from the live audience It's the drop. <laughs> Mr. Andrews. Mr. Andrews, what I thought. Well, I think uh, one of the things we need to keep taxes down. Uh, Middlesboro, uh, I think when you go over there, you, you, you buy groceries and no tax. I think we ought to look into their tax business of Claiborne County. I think we're taxed to death, land taxes, and percentage 9.25 I think uh, taxes could uh, 
you can raise things, why can't you lower things? I think we need to uh, tell people. And, and I I'm a strong believer in uh, trading with your own county, trading with your own people. I I'd rather pay just a little bit more myself and knowing that it's going to the county, our county, instead of uh, Bell County. But I think that what we need to do is advertise, and, uh, and which they do all the time anyway, but uh, I think that we need to tell people, let's trade in our own county. Let's not give it to the next county. Let's help Claiborne County out. Well, the tax issue on the food and stuff, that is something that is being addressed. We have addressed that with uh, several different uh, individuals, and we are working on that. And the second thing, we could put some garage doors on the tunnel over here would help a whole lot. But, uh, but uh, we just need to uh, uh, work on that, and, uh, uh, and we are working on the taxes and stuff with our groceries and all that. And a lot of people, I'm with Casey, they drive 15 miles to save two cents on a gallon of gas. They burn it out before they even get back home. So, uh, listen, charity starts at home. That's what the Bible says. Charity starts at home. If you want better roads, buy you guys in Claiborne County. If you want things to get better in Claiborne County, keep it at home. You can drive through Walmarts and Middlesbrough tonight, and guess what? 60% of them will be Claiborne County tags. But... That's our choice. That's everybody's choice. And, uh, but charity starts at home, and the sooner we learn that we need to buy at home, the quicker we'll see our economy grow, roads get better, taxes get better, and all that. And we've not had a, pro a property tax increase in four years. I'm very proud of that. And, uh, and uh, we just need to... Uh, educate our people and we're trying to do these things trying to do these things to educate them hey listen if you can drive over to virginia and get a, a bottle of pop because it's uh, 99 cents there and it's a dollar three at iga my goodness stop and think that tax is going towards your roads that tax is helping to support your schools <laughs> question uh, you know that's been addressed a whole lot and a lot of work I'm in I do manage properties in Kentucky and I do manage properties in Tennessee uh, unfortunately uh, they, they do have zero tax on groceries and a lower sales tax in Kentucky but their property taxes are out the roof uh, so they're, they'd be double if we dropped our set grocery sales to zero and our sales tax to six percent then our property taxes would go out you know, outside hit more than double, and I've seen it. So, uh, and you know, I hadn't thought about no garage doors or nothing. I thought about toll booth or something, but then we'd be affecting people that works in Millsboro and in the Kentucky area, so we don't want to charge them to commute back and forth to work. So, uh, you know, we just bring more, like I say, bring stuff in, bring, uh, you know, smaller things in, you know, like, a, you know, just retail stores and stuff that make people want to stop in that shopping center that uh, catch their eye and they stop in that shopping center and they say, well, instead of driving on over to Kentucky, I'm going to run right over here to, you know, United Grocery Outlet. I'm going to run right over here to Ingalls Market. So, uh, you know, bring little stuff in like that that would catch people's eye. If we can get them stopped in the shopping center, if they go trade in that shopping center, they, you know, if you get them interested, they will. And I've seen it firsthand, like saying the line of work I'm in, uh, I've, I've experienced it, I've witnessed it, I've done it myself. So, uh, and like I say, and some people will still drive through that tunnel every time they can fill up with guys and buy their groceries. That's part of their lifestyle and routine. Unfortunately, you know, we can do the best we can to help it, but, uh, you know, uh, like I say, if we can get something at it, you know, just catch your attention there. And that's like the tourist, uh, catch, have something to do, just to stop them and catch your attention for a minute, and they spend their money here too. I believe in trade in our own county as well.
Uh, I know we have a lot of people in this county that drive over there and, and do their shopping stuff. You know, my family, we try to do our shopping in Claiborne County. Uh, I feel that that's our county where we were born and raised. We raised our kids there. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep our shopping there. And we all have a tendency, we go to Millsboro to eat Cracker Barrel or something. You know, that would be a good thing to have in Claiborne County, get something like that. So that wouldn't push people to go over there to eat. They would eat here. Uh, also, and you have to look at the other side. It goes two ways. A lot of people from Kentucky over there have Tennessee tags. So they drive over here. They have an address over here, a user address to get their tags over here to save them money. So we kind of got a vice versa going there. But uh, I know they're, they're working on a super Walmart over here in Claiborne County. Uh, I think they're in a fight right now where it's going to be. But that'll help us. That'll save us a lot of shopping over there. Once we get that super Walmart, people will quit driving to Millsboro for their Walmart. Um, and I think it just needs to be addressed to the county. And, and, you know, all of us sitting here and the people watching on TV, you know, needs to, needs to try to get that in their hearts and tell their family, hey, let's shop here in Claiborne County. Let's keep our, keep our, uh, all of our shopping here. Those taxes that we spend in Claiborne County goes to help our roads, our school system, our health department, uh, our landfill. You know, that's, we got five, five major departments in Claiborne County that we're trying to, to budget. And those taxes help budget that. And the more people that go there, go to Kentucky or Virginia shop, that takes away from us. And we don't want to take away from our youth in these schools over here. We don't want to take away from our roads. So let's, we need to emphasize that at home. We need to bring that at our house, everybody's home, and say, you know what, let's, let's stay here in Claiborne County. Let's shop here in Claiborne County. Let's eat here in Claiborne County. So uh, that's, a, that's my plan, and that's, you know, that's what I would think the people of Claiborne County need to emphasize. Thank you. Wow. That's a difficult, uh, difficult thing for, uh, for me to talk about, uh, particularly since I spent the last 20 years trying to get everybody from Claiborne County to come to Middlesboro. Um, you know, there's some things that you're not going to be able to change. People are creatures of habit. Uh, people will go where they can save a dollar. The only way that we're going to be able to stop people from going to Middlesboro to shop is if we make it more economical for them to stay here. Um, I thought about this many years ago. Uh, the I've got a uh, individual that works for me that uh, had an idea. Uh, I don't know whether you all know Rick Long. But uh, we talked in depth a few years ago about uh, the state ought to give counties that are on the border some flexibility with the state's portion of that, uh, that tax, whether it be on groceries or whatever it may be. Uh, if you notice from the border, you know, it's 12 miles before you hit a major grocery store. And that's because of the advantages that Kentucky has on the, uh, on the taxes on groceries. I will say that Kentucky is strapped for money as a state and that over the past few years they've started adding taxes to different groceries, uh, single serve items, party trays, things of those nature. Um, people in Claiborne County don't realize until they get there. But once they add those taxes in, it's still only 6% compared to our nine. Now, we did, uh, on groceries in Tennessee, lower that tax. I guess I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Short, uh, there's no way to solve that problem until you make our county more appealing to people to, to spend their money here. And, and some of the candidates uh, suggested some good ideas, but the most important thing is you, the mayor and the county leadership has to work with state senators and representatives and stay on their case constantly to try to get us some kind of tax relief to keep people from traveling across the border to spend their money. And we need to work on our existing businesses. They're strapped, they're taxed to death, 
and they're, they're struggling to make it here in our county. So we need to figure out a way to give them t some kind of tax break that they can pass on to the consumer to entice them to stay and spend money here as well. And the tax issue, it, it may be a state level thing when, they, when we get our property repraised, but when it gets repraised, you're paying a higher property tax regardless how you want to look at that. You're paying more money. Uh, so we need to just work diligently with the state and, and try our best to uh, share our burden with them and let them know that we're strapped here in our county and our money is leaving our county and going across the border and, and try to work with them every way possible and giving us some kind of tax relief. Thank you. We're going to change the rules. You know the rules. I'm going to tell them we're not going to mix you up. They've had two minutes on each of the questions. As we go into the closing statements, we're going to cut that in half. So that gives you, y'all better be thinking real quick. Where do we start, Dr. Sellers? Are we going to start with the, uh, Mr. Daniels will be next. Pardon me? Mr. Daniels will be. Mr. Daniels? Did you say one hour or one minute? No, you have uh, <laughs> one minute, as do all of the other candidates. Okay, I'd like to say I'm certainly thankful for being the mayor of Claiborne County for the last four years. I've worked very hard. We've not had a property tax rate increase. We've had a total of 56 grants, a total of almost 3.7 million. We paid on our county debt $14,850,000, first ever jobs program, and we've worked very hard with the road department. And I tell you in that tonight that I look forward to serving this county four more years and everything that has been accomplished has come through each and every board of Claiborne County. And I'll promise you we're not finished. We're just getting started. And I tell you what, I've got as much far in me as there one of them sitting up here tonight. I guarantee you that. So we're just very thankful and may God bless you. We'd like to say uh, it's been truly an honor to be able to even run for the mayor candidacy, and uh, we've had a blast doing it. If we have not spoke to you, if you're out there watching on TV tonight or in the audience, we have not spoke to you yet. Uh, we're, we're sorry. We're still trying to get around to everybody. The county is a big county, so we're doing our very best to speak to each and every one that we can up to election day. But if I had one thing to ask you, I ask you to vote for Nathan Everson on August 7th. Early voting does start. Uh, this coming Friday here, so I actually get out and vote. I ask the county to get out and vote and vote Everson, and I'll be that mayor that you can talk to, the mayor that that'll be your friend uh, and, and to be a help to you there. So and it, just help me work for you. That's the, that's what I'm asking you to do. Thank you and God bless. Uh, running for county mayor has always been a dream of mine, and I finally pursued my dream. Uh, if I if I'm elected, great. If I don't, I've met some wonderful people out here just out campaigning, and I've had a really wonderful time. It's been worth it. Um, I'm a lifelong citizen of Claiborne County. I love my county. My heart's in this. I want to do this from my heart. I also want to emphasize that if I'm elected county mayor, I'm going to do my best to. Uh, fix this problem we always had in this county we're letting this river divide us and it shouldn't be like it we're a county and we need to act as a county we need to work together and come together as a county and uh, show each other and as if I'm elected as your mayor uh, I won't I'll be I'll be somebody you'd be proud of you can go out and say you know Rick Poor is our county mayor and be proud of it and I want to build a county that you can go outside of here and brag and be proud that you're a Claiborne County citizen Thank you very much, and God bless you. I think uh, Casey said it best when he said leadership. Uh, we need a strong leader for our county. I believe that I can do that for you. I've got a proven track record of leadership as well as community involvement. Uh, I would be honored to serve as your mayor uh, if you see fit to vote for me. Uh, it's a job that I would not take lightly. 
I work hard every day at what I do, and I will continue to work hard every day for you. Uh, I know everybody here has said the same thing. Uh, it's a matter of who you've seen doing it, who you're going to believe is going to continue to do it. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for giving us your time. Uh, my door is always open. If anybody, if I've not answered your question well enough, feel free to contact me. My phone number is 423-259-1049. That's my cell phone number. I will not answer it all the time, but I will get back with you. Listen, we only had a few minutes to share some information with you tonight, but the last four years has showed you why we need a change and why you should vote for me. As I stated earlier, a public servant is someone that performs duty for other people and I'll fulfill that expectation. Ronald Reagan said it best that when he said, we the people tell the government what to do, it don't tell us what to do. And I won't be a self-serving mayor, and I pledge to you I won't be controlled by anyone or any one group. In order for us to move forward, we've got to eliminate the good old boy politics. And I ask you to join me in our efforts, of, in my efforts of becoming your next mayor. And may God bless you and your families. Well, my name is Casey Anders, and I would like to be your mayor so I can help the people of Claiborne County and help our children and our grandchildren. And uh, I will make a difference. If I'm elected as mayor, I will make a difference. I know a lot of need that we need, and I will work that we get it. And uh, I'll not raise, I'll raise game before I, if they start wanting to raise taxes and stuff. We're taxed to death. We, we, we just need factories. We need stuff in here for people to work at. And I believe some of our problems will be solved when we get all that done. And I will work at it uh, every single day. And I've got some innovative ways that the county can make money. So, and I will spend your money and watch it wise as I can and be a mayor that you can be proud of. Thank you. We've had a good evening. I want to first and foremost thank our candidates. Uh, this is a, it, it may not seem as pushy or anything, but it's a grueling affair. And I, I personally, and I know the, the staff here, thanks our candidates. Also, I want to compliment and thank our audience. We've had a very attentive audience and we, we really do appreciate your attendance. Thank you very much for coming. I've got two or three little housekeeping things. Also, I want to thank the LMU Maintenance Department. You know, sometimes we take things for granted. Uh, this stage and all of this uh, put together was done by them, and, uh, and uh, I do appreciate it, and I know you all do when you think about it. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the signal workers. We've got a lot of people over here who've been doing a lot of stuff that you don't know. And if you want to see what they have done tonight, this is something that you need to hear. Every Tuesday, I don't know how many Tuesdays now between now and Election Day, this forum tonight will be run on LMU TV, both cable channel 4 and channel 20. So if you all want to reaffirm what you say, if you want to see if they said what you thought they said, every Tuesday night until election, this will be rerun on cable channel 4 and cable channel 20, thanks to Vive and their media. Now, also, Thursday night, here in this same location, we will have our forum that features the candidates for district attorney and the Claiborne County Sheriff. I, I really hope that people will turn out for this forum, and uh, it too will be rerun on Thursday nights until election. And that way we think we can spread at least the word around and let you people uh, in this county become acquainted with those people running for elected office. Again, I don't know of anything else to cover. I think it's been a good evening. Sincerely do appreciate, appreciate everybody. I want to thank Dr. Martin Sellers. He's our Dean of our Fine Arts Division here at Lincoln Memorial University, and I appreciate him for sharing the podium with me. Y'all have a safe trip home and good night.